All right, everyone, back down here. Dad's just over here working on these brackets for our uh, pipes that come through the shaft alley. Little modification on them. Uh, these ones are for holding our fuel lines in, and these single ones are for holding our drain line and water line. So, yep. So, uh, prior to this, we had a little plate that we made and this held that in. Um, since these are just single ones, the way they're configured is you have a, a plate. This would be a weld plate and it's got two line nuts basically on there and the second halves both come in with a bolt on each side so what we did was we punched a hole in there this is gonna this is gonna replace the fiberglass plate essentially bolt in like that with our pipes and then we'll come back in with our other plate like that to hold our uh, water pipe so yeah. and then these bolts go in the sides like that into this friction welded uh, little uh, thread socket yeah so, so since these good. pipes are right there and there's really no way to put the water pipe above or below it plus you'd have to make another hole in there to hold the brackets and everything this is a really good solution that will solve that um, should be pretty slick because I just got to heat up this bolt head and probably just, well, I guess I can just, maybe I'll just drill it out, huh? Yeah, I think just drill it out. It yeah. won't compromise it at all. No, it won't. So yeah, I'll just drill that out and then uh, this will be good to go. Um, yeah, pretty simple, simple deal. Yeah, so dad's been working on that. That's kind of the next thing for forward progress on our shaft alley here. He got the ends of the fuel lines weld back on and yesterday we got the holes drilled out for our plates that go against the aft bulkhead there yep you can kind of see one there um up close this is what it looks like how it turned out yep so, so yeah i'm just getting these brackets lined up and then i can get our pipes in place and um got a little bit of glass work to do down here where these uh, plates go through but once that's done we can clean up down here pretty good and uh, I think we'll be ready to start putting our, our shaft alley covers down which have been sitting over here in a pile for some time. Yeah, that'll be exciting. Yeah. Yep, yeah. So while dad's doing that, I will bring you down to the engine room and show you what I'm about to do. Alright, so working my way aft here. This is the forward bulkhead of the fish hold. And down here, we've got our fuel lines, drain, water, all that stuff. And as you can see, um, the bulkhead is uh, is not the prettiest. So, um, while we're not looking to replace the bulkhead at this time, we are going to face out this area around these pipes a little bit nicer. And that is so that we can tie in these tubes from the shaft alley, the alley covers will be like at this height. Uh, these tubes come in through the shaft alley, so we'll put a piece of foam in here, which then we can tie in these tubes to just have a nice clean finish. And uh, then going forward, it'll be a lot easier to, uh, to kind of just take apart this bulkhead in pieces and uh, work our way around it and uh, not have to try and, I guess, worry about disconnecting all these pipes and everything that goes with that. It'll just kind of be a finished unit in this little area right here, which is the, the big goal. So as you can see, I've already traced out some lines. I'm just going to grab the skill saw and rip that top one. I doubt I'll be able to get that bottom one with it so got the saws all for that and then just kind of start prying this old wood out of here it's all oil soaked from years of grease and and a messy engine room so try and get that out of there
I don't think we'll have to come back to this one, guys. Alright. Sawzall blades are pretty roach, so... Swing by the store and grab some fresh ones. Oh, well, we'll return. Alright. Got a fresh new blade. This one's pretty hammered. It's a lot of teeth. Wouldn't do much cutting, I don't think. So, we'll shell... Try round two here. All right, guys, I'll keep cutting here and bring you back in a bit. So I got that uh, wood busted out, guys. Uh, it's just doing a cleanup pass on the top of it. Kind of got a little crooked on my line. But it came out good. The uh, chunks broke out easy this time. It's always advisable to save this till you got everything else done. You come in here and do it. <laughs> Now, honestly, we didn't really know exactly what we were doing here at the time, so sometimes it's better to ease into things a little bit. We were hesitant to cut this out and open up a big can of worms, so really all we're doing is just um, isolating these, these tubes and the tube that goes around our shaft alley, and then the rest of the stuff can be removed at a later date if and when we get there. All right, guys, so Dad's got his chunk of foam here. Took it down below and put it against those tubes coming through and uh, hit them a little bit to create a little indentation there. You can kind of see <laughs> the mark and just went off the middle of them. All right, everyone, so we got a couple of pieces here. These are for the inside of the engine room bulkhead. Uh, they're all prepped and ready. Just threw a light coat of resin on them to seal up the foam since it's not going to be something we, uh, I guess, laminate with anything. It's just going to be getting glued against the bulkhead like that with kind of exposed edges. Not really much we can do with it right now. Not until we actually replace the bulkhead itself so that'll at least close the close those cells of the foam and make it a little less uh i guess absorbative if that's even a word but so we did that yesterday we also made a couple of little um pads these are for the uh for the pipe holders 
so those go into the stringer down the fish hole. We've done that before, shown that before, but our aft two over here uh, are too short for the pipes now, or uh, don't go back far enough to support the pipes, rather. So I'll pass it down to Dad. He did some work down here yesterday. These fuel lines are too short now to um, get clamped. So uh, they'll actually go forward a little bit more and then that's going to leave us room for some tubing like this to come in and we'll put a couple of bends in it, match it up. So um, we'll just pull a line between this hole and the bracket back here, get the center line and mark it and then we can install the new bracket. And uh, meanwhile yesterday I got these pads in place, uh, these, I guess, these bulkhead fittings or whatever you want to call them. And so now I'm just going to clean up the faces right here. I, I just bedded these in to kind of a socket. Um, that always makes a really nice clean install instead of just having a plate flat against a bulkhead and that crack right there. Um, this is going to just like keep it nice and clean. Um, I'll just hit this with a grinder real quick or die grinder and knock off this these burrs right here and then we'll drive it out from the other side and so we'll just get that cleaned up and then these can be um, basically just put in here permanently we'll probably just put a small bead of some silicone or 5200 in there and uh, and that's gonna be that um, once those pieces are glued up forward on the engine room bulkhead then we can get these pipes right here um, set in their exact position and then we'll go ahead and we'll take some tubing, we'll get a cut. This is just a piece of scrap I have, um, it's not going to have 90s on it, it'll have 45s. So two 45s to bring us up the height that we need right there and we'll get those, uh, we'll get those cut and we'll get them bent, get them flared and that stuff will all be ready to go. And the last thing will be to bend this tubing. Um, we've got a technique that we'll probably use, uh, just involves heating up some sand and pouring it in there. And it makes it nice and soft and pliable. And then we can just put it in just a simple form. Um, just a couple of slats of wood or something in the uh, shape that we need. Same thing, kind of a 45, 245s to get us uh, the rise and the height that we need. Actually, in this case, it's going to be more like bringing it over and in. And so we'll get that, uh, that dimension figured out and we'll get those men. I could probably pass you a cap and you can put it on that JIC and and tap on it. Um, just go with the very outboard one. Got a little bit of separation on this inner edge, but that's okay. Nice, there it comes. Good. A little bit of separation there, no big deal. <clears throat> Still light tapping, didn't have to hammer it out or anything really. Yep, it's free. Alright, how's that? A little bit of tidy up in there. Looks good. I think that's probably just the mat that came loose a little bit right there. I think I can just work a little bit of resin in there. It's not that big of a deal.
Okay, hold it a sec. There you go. <clears throat> nice. Good, good. Good. It kind of, I guess it cracked it there in a couple spots, but yeah, all in all, it looks good. Yeah, I like it. Just take a little sandpaper and tidy things up a bit. All right, cool. Oh, we'll get this cleaned up. Uh, Get these other uh, brackets for our pipes marked out, and uh, we'll go from there. All right, guys, this is leap several months forward. Uh, just wanted to share with you the uh, finished product here. So here you got your uh, electric conduit and the uh, fuel lines. And then on the other side, the drain line, the schedule 80 inch and a quarter drain line and the other two fuel lines. So we didn't actually film that part, it's just kind of like fiddly work. I guess I showed bending the PVC and conduit and the uh, 
sound was actually like broken, so it's just a silent part of the video. But anyways, just wanted to show show that to you. The uh, the plate against the bulkhead turned out really nice. Just put some 5200 behind it and sucked it in with the uh, bolts on the uh, backside of the uh, tank tankage compartment. So there it is. Um, we did end up putting another clamp mount right here. You can just kind of see it. And uh, we didn't actually neck this one yet, but it's pretty rigid. We'll probably put the other clamp further forward because we only have five of them for now anyways. And same thing over here. Yeah, turned out pretty good. That's looking forward. Okay, looking down into the uh, tankage compartment here. Try and share with you what's going on. Uh, we connect the fuel lines to each of the tanks. As well, the water line, you can kind of see uh, where they're going to the bulkhead there. That's our stainless fitting that we were working on. So it's not the prettiest thing back here. It's pretty dirty and definitely, uh, definitely not what our final product will look like back here. Once we uh, move forward on this boat, we'll definitely gut out this compartment and do all that fun work at a later time, but uh, at least the uh, lines are uh, up to snuff. So anyways, we shall return to this spot at a later date. Well, hello there. Howdy, howdy. Well, we're just down here in the engine room, uh, starting to get these tanks replumbed. They're a pretty big mess down here, a big oily mess to be accurate. Um, jumped the gun and already got a couple of these fittings in place, but we're kind of playing around with the orientation and this is about the best that we can do. Uh, <clears throat> came in here and got this cleaned up the other day. Got a piece of wood down under my feet, which my ankles truly um, thank me for. I gotta tell you, it's pretty hard to work on a slant. Um, so yeah, we're just getting this, uh, this valving back in place. The brass one right here is for a sight glass. There's a clear tube that goes into here. It'll be pointed straight up. You can see some old markings up here on the bulkhead. I don't know how accurate they are. After we get this installed, we'll go to the fuel dock and we'll put 50 gallons in and we'll mark it on the sight glass and so on and so forth, so forth until we get back to the top. Um, it's an aluminum tank. When you install fittings onto an aluminum tank, you never want to go with the brass into aluminum. That's uh, a very bad thing to do. You'll get a lot of corrosion. Um, always use a stainless bushing. It insulates the, the two different metals from each other and you won't have as much corrosion problems. And so that's what we have is just a stainless reducer here. And then we're going into a half inch T and our brass sight glass is here. And then we'll follow that up with half inch gate valve, um, excuse me, ball valve. Uh, <clears throat> so we already put some sealant on this. This is, uh, what is this stuff called anyways? It is uh, Vibratite, I Vibratite. think. Yeah, so this is Vibratite here. This is good stuff. Um, uh, who's the other? Loctite makes a, a similar product and it's specifically for like hydraulic and fuel lines. Um, stainless steel, it's very good for stainless, it keeps from galling up and uh, creates a good seal that doesn't leak. So uh, let's see, I already have this fitting tight right here. I might just have to bring it here a little bit more, but I'm going to throw a wrench on this and rotate this one the rest of the way. And then we'll need to go up and we'll need to, uh, I guess, get a measurement here and cut that sight glass down and install it. It's just a compression fitting right here. So there's a, a rubber, uh, it's like a really fat O-ring. It's not really a round O-ring. 
um, in terms of uh, of its profile. It's uh, it's more of a square, but it's in a round shape. So, uh, anyways, it's just like a big fat washer. Um, that goes in here. Compression fitting goes over it, and it tightens up around the clear side glass tube. Has a valve on it because you don't want to leave these open. If that side glass ever got hit by something and broke, it would dump your whole tank. So when you go to check your fuel level, you just simply open the valve. It'll adjust to the correct level, either go up or go down. And then when you're finished, you close that valve off and you leave it closed. And uh, yeah, that's about it. It's gonna be nice to start getting this stuff cleaned up down here. Um, it's a far cry than when we first got the boat. If you guys have seen that video, um, you'll know what I'm talking about. If not, go way back in the history of this playlist and you'll see. Uh, still got a little work up here to do. Um, I was just looking at this pondering like, what's up with the spider web? Like, do they do it intentionally? <laughs> like, why didn't they run that hydraulic hose on the outside of the others? And why is that one over there when it could be over here? It's just a mess, right? Um, Anyone's guess. <laughs> yeah. Maybe anyone... that hose was short. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Oh, gosh. It was such a mess in here before, maybe that's all I could do. Um, okay, well... Maybe I've reconsidered because I'm like, oh gosh, what if the like sight glass starts leaking, the stem on it or something? You have to drain the whole tank in order to repair it. Um, I probably overthink things too much, but I might change it to like that configuration. That still allows this valve to, to turn right here. The lock actually works on that part. Um, which is an open position, not that it really matters, but it's a closed position. Yeah, it doesn't really change much. It puts the uh, um, sight glass over a bit more, but it's up against the wall. It's gonna be kind of hidden anyways. It'd be nice if it was a little tighter in here like that, but gosh, it's like a half dozen to another, so. So, we want this handle to be just like so. This looks pretty good. So then I think we're just gonna put the T this way and then we'll just drop that down for our feed. Or maybe it'll go up. I don't know where about where our manifold is going to be yet. We need to make a manifold still. Um, hmm. Down, I suppose, huh? Probably down. Down, and we can loop it back up if need be. Put the crank on her. Yeah. So we did reconsider, and it pokes out a little bit further, but. Um, this is actually how it was to start with. So I'm just gonna put it back that way and live with it, I guess. I think it's, I think it's better than, than what we had going on the other way. I feel better about it anyways. pokes out there a mile, but that's where it's going to be for now. I think our shorter term plan is to maybe eliminate whatever is in here, which I'm guessing is probably concrete, and drop this tank down, and that would allow us um, at least to lower a good portion of this tank. We might lose some volume, but then we could put machinery over the top of the tank and, uh, and still have some fuel capacity up here. We'll see. We shall see. Now, which 
which side is which, right? So that'll look fine like that. So. all our valves open and close which they do and uh, yeah that'll have to do for now really wasn't much else we could do other than like maybe throw a couple of 90s on here yeah <laughs> glory um, this is a sight glass material it's like a thick I don't know I think an acrylic or something um, one thing's for sure don't use acetone on them just found that out luckily it's just up here where we had our cut mark I'm gonna hurt anything but it did definitely melt that so uh, so pretty simple um, just a compression fitting Got a thick rubber washer. Nothing fancy. We're gonna just put it up through there and uh, we'll just put our compression nut on first. You want it in there enough that it won't wiggle out somehow, too, though. Yeah. So, I mean, it should be plenty good, I think. Yeah. Just gotta get the, um, the washer in there, but yeah, it looks like the one in there. That's good, huh? Yeah, just a little bit of oil or something. I think so. Give it a little tiny dunk. There you go. Beautiful. Alrighty. Nice. That'll do it. I'm just going to slug this up a little bit. That's the wrong wrench. I think I've got my spanner. Snug that up a little bit. And once we put some fuel in here, then we'll tighten it a bit more if it needs it. But that's basically it. So you open that. I'll adjust to the height of your tank, close it when you're done. Nice. Like it. That will do it for now other than a uh, hose barb off of here and then we'll go into our, uh, well we're going to go into a manifold that allows us to select which which tank we're running off of. So it's kind of redundant, but we'll have a valve on each tank. It's always a good good practice. If you break your hose or something somewhere downstream from that, you want to be able to turn that off. That looks much better than it used to. Yeah. Uh, like Dad said, uh, we have a video of me pulling apart the old fuel system, like the old like sort of barrel manifold thing going on. It was horrible. and stuff over here. It was bunch absolutely of, archaic. Bunch of ugly mess. And, uh, yeah, we'll Nasty a, and oily and leaky, and this will not be leaking when we're done with it. Yeah, we'll put it in the description down below if you want to check it out. Yeah. So, anyways. Yeah. Well, so, I guess that kind of wraps it up for that. That was, um... A very complex yet simple job. Um, <laughs> you know, plumbing is like, you know, you always have like this perfect, you want it to be like just perfect, but it's never perfect. 
plumbing just never is like that easy to make make it nice um, when you have a certain amount of space or you're trying to get things as compact as you can but that's just gonna have to do it for now yeah like that's was saying earlier once we kind of reconfigure the engine room here potentially do a built-in fuel tank and everything and mm -hmm. everything will change at that point so yeah then yeah, we can put our fitting where we want it probably over a little bit more and elbowed that way and then you can put your sight glasses and everything will go to a back wall where most likely your fuel manifold is going to be in your ray cores and all that when it comes out this close to the wall then you're really constrained with what you can do yep stuffed right in the corner too is never yeah. a good thing or never easy yeah i think it's much better if it's like right here coming out like here and then you 90 over and you've just got this one small area but then this is all open over here for your ray cores your, your fuel manifold or whatever but now right now i mean this whole area is basically taken by this real estate all right guys last update for now down here in the engine room you might notice uh there's a couple of fiberglass panels on the wall uh we just whipped those up before we put our fiberglass equipment away um it's just a layer of 90 and mat just to uh kind of give us a cleaner surface to mount stuff to a lot easier to wipe stuff up off it if we splash fuel or anything like that um we might paint them with gel coat if we uh, go and pick up a fresh can i think we're all out of gel coat so we'd have to go get a new can but either way it's a lot easier cleaning this off than than uh, plywood so um anyway i just want to share with you the the uh valve here we did do one last final change um not sure how it ended up before but um it it came straight out into the valve into T, into the side glass, which ended up out around here. Um, Dad came back later, disconnected it all again, and ended up putting this uh, street elbow going down into the valve, into the T, and off the T with the uh, sight glass there. So it is uh, a lot better now. It's much lower, uh, much lower profile brought it in a lot more from where it was out here and yeah it looks really good now um also down in here in the pit i ended up glassing a chunk of laminate foam over there and sealing it up with some gel coat that'll contain any spills that we might have with the uh fuel system here and keep it from running all the way forward in the uh, uh against the side string here kind of help contain that mess a bit and um this little chunk of foam here we actually gel coated that too turned out really good uh, here's the fuel lines coming out of the stainless lines and our water line going up so I uh, still haven't connected our uh, two drain lines there. Uh, I think we will bring a couple of 90s up into a T and just uh, connect them in here somewhere and run them out over uh, to the through hole. So um, yeah, anyways. So we also got our water hooked back up. Uh, that's the PEX tube coming up around there comes through this uh, beam here this tank support beam or uh, actually it's more like a tank uh, anyway I don't know what it is comes through this beam out right there into this uh, little flow jet pump and it tees off right here this is the cold water side goes into our hot water heater uh, it's pretty nice unit it has a heat exchanger that you uh, plumb your main in with into and it 
uh, heat exchange the hot coolant into your uh, fresh water and then uh, I think I think this one here is the our hot water side for now um, we're gonna have to mount this down or rather just bolt it down and we didn't want to buy a hose for something that we might lift up push back all that stuff so uh, yeah that's just more of a temporary thing right now to get our water going again I uh, got the uh, galley all tidied up and cleaned up it's much better now so yeah anyways I guess that was the last thing to share here all right hope you guys enjoyed the video if you did please like a please like a please a like the video <laughs> all right guys hope you enjoyed the video if you did please leave a thumbs up comment down below if you haven't subscribed to our channel please consider doing it doesn't cost you a thing helps us out youtube uh will recognize our effort and hopefully plug us into their mm, mysterious algorithm and uh you can also follow along on facebook and instagram at eis alaska so we'll see you again soon